every time we talk about non-OECD donors, everyone, whether it's development practitioners or whether it's uh, folks on Capitol Hill, they want to know what are the Chinese doing. And so since we couldn't get the data through official public sources, uh, we tried a second best approach, which is a media-based data collection. So we look at about 30,000 different media sources in multiple langu languages to try to identify and then characterize a variety of different kinds of Chinese development finance flows, both those that are from the government, uh, both those that are sort of quasi-governmental, quasi-private, and then private flows. We're the most confident in the data that is from the government. And so while we are certain that we have errors in the data set, uh, we used a systematic replicable method so that other people could come by who knew more about uh, Africa or Chinese aid who could come by and look at the individual project rows to correct the record. So on, in the data set there is a framework for crowdsourcing, there's a framework for journalists or beneficiaries to engage with the data and provide additional sources or correct the record where we've gotten it wrong. So how much help, help have you got? We were shocked actually. Uh, we built the, the crowdsourcing platform on a very small budget and we thought very few people would be very motivated to provide information. And just in the last two weeks, we've been, I would say, overwhelmed with responses. And some people use the public online crowdsourcing function, but some people just email us separately and say, hey, I don't want my identity to be known, but you should look more closely at project number 47, look for these additional data sources. I think you all think that project is complete, it's not. Uh, Etc. So we've got we've been a little overwhelmed. We weren't prepared for the amount of feedback that we've gotten so far. So what is the today's truth about Chinese aid? You know, a lot of the things that people were saying about Chinese aid without access to data are correct. Uh, people were characterizing uh, Chinese official development finance as financing the hardware of development. So it's not financing for uh, social safety nets, it's not financing for education, it's not financing for the environment, which is where Western aid has tended to move. Instead, it, it finances the hardware development, it finances infrastructure, it finances uh, extractive industries, uh, energy, a lot of big ticket items that developing countries in Africa, those are their priorities. And so, while the financing modalities vary dramatically, some of this comes from grants, some of it from subsidized loans, and some of it commercial loans. Uh, the types of things that are being funded are consistent, we found, with the conventional wisdom. The part that surprised us, uh, the sort of part that we didn't expect to see, was lots of folks who have commented on Chinese uh, activities in Africa argue that uh, Chinese aid is rogue aid, that Chinese aid is more likely to go to countries that are human rights violators. It's more likely to go to countries that are non-democratic. It's more likely to go to countries that uh, sort of engage in civil conflict against their own citizens. And to be honest, we did not find this. Uh, we, this was one of the hypotheses that we wanted to test. So we gathered other data. We used sort of a variety of different modeling techniques. And mostly, I mean, there are some exceptions, but mostly, Chinese aid is not that far out of the mainstream in terms of the countries that receive it. Uh, the Chinese are looking to, usually they're looking to make money or they're looking to support governments that support them diplomatically. So you might argue not so different than the things that the United States uses its, its aid for. Any reactions from China? Uh, that was the biggest surprise to us. So I have to be honest, we w did reach out to the Chinese government before, uh, well, three and four years before, uh, and we asked them for help. Uh, I argued, wouldn't it be useful to the Chinese government if everyone in the world knew how generous the Chinese government was being in Africa? Uh, and I was told, everyone who needs to know how generous we are already knows. So I, I, we haven't gotten any help from them, and we thought they might be quite hostile to this effort. But the media coverage in Chinese newspapers, both privately held and government-owned newspapers, has been quite positive. So we were actually nervous that our infrastructure would be endangered, that they would complain to the university. Uh, and we have not gotten any official response, but the unofficial responses have been 
very positive. The number of people that visit the website, you can see where they're coming from. Uh, and I would say the majority, not the majority, the plurality are coming from the United States, but the second largest country, the second largest number of internet hits comes from China. So Chinese people are reading about what their government is doing uh, based on this sort of media-based data collection that we've conducted. So you have a long uh, history of engagement with Chinese. What, what is your view on Chinese aid to Africa and, and it's for instance, uh, Ghana, where you come from? Well, I must say that um, um, it's kind of a mixed feeling. One, uh, I have enjoyed the Chinese aid. I did my first degree in China between 1984 and 1989. Uh, besides, there are a number of students who have been to China uh, as part of uh, aid to Ghana. Today in Ghana, I would say that uh, most of our streets have been taken over by Chinese. One, um, it's like, you know, uh, spreading out to Africa, Comp competition with Europe, I must say. Uh, they find a lot of resources in Africa. Ghana, for instance, with our oil find, just recently, uh, Chinese have agreed to grant Ghana $3 billion cities in you know, a loan. For that matter, I see that to be on a positive side when it comes to aid. But other areas that today is lingering on in Ghana is the way that they of late have actually resorted to illegal mining, depleting our water resources, polluting our water resources. Just recently, a number of them have been arrested. I think that area is something that Ghana needs to dialogue with the Chinese government and we see to it that uh, it, is, it is actually linked in the, in the, in the back.